Hi everyone, it's Nicole McGork and today I have a card share for you featuring Distress inks used with stencils and I use them for both the flower arrangement in the vase there and also for the diagonal striped background on the card base. To create the flowers in the vase, I'm taking this Wildflowers 6x6 stencil from My Favorite Things and I taped it in place over some Tim Holtz watercolor paper. I'm using watercolor paper because I am going to be using a little bit of water over the Distress inks once I have the entire design layered here just to give it a little bit of interest. Now you can see I got a little bit of green. It went through one of the other flower designs there when I was doing that tall one and because it's watercolor paper and the Distress inks work well with water, I just took a damp baby wipe and cleaned up that little spot really quick. You're going to want to do that right away if you have a little mistake like that before the ink dries, but you can clean up little boo-boos like that really easily just with a damp cloth or baby wipe. Now I'm layering my Distress Ink Flowers one right on top of the of another right here and right now I'm going ahead and doing the entire flower. I am using the Sukaneko daubers to apply the Distress ink through the stencil onto the, my watercolor paper because they're small and it gives me more control where I place the flowers on my design especially with a stencil like this that has lots of different designs on one stencil as opposed to an all-over design like the diagonal background will be here near the end of the video when I do the background of the card. This has lots of different florals going all different ways and these daubers really allow for me to have a lot of control where I place the ink. I'm using all kinds of colors of Distress ink for the purples, I use the Shaded Lilac and Seedless Preserves. For the pink flowers, I'm using Spun Sugar and Picked Raspberry. Now here I'm layering another purple flower and I'm this one I guess I did go all the way over some of the pink flowers, but you can pick and choose where you want to apply some of those. I only did one of those right there, and I'm just masking off with some post-it tape the other flower here so that I could position them exactly where I wanted them, I guess is what I want to say. You can see there I didn't go over the leaf on that particular one. So I, you can pick where you want to apply the stencil. I love that about using the stencils. You can create, especially with like a flower arrangement or other types of images similar to this, you can really pick and choose where you want to put the ink and create just the image that you want to choose. So back to the colors I'm using. I'm using the squ Squeeze Lemonade, Spiced Marmalade, and Barn Door for that kind of yellowish orange red flower, the peacock feathers and chipped sapphire for these blue flowers, and for all the greenery I used shabby shutters and mowed lawn. I'm gonna add just one more teeny little flower down here. And you can blend them out with the daubers just like you would with the foam applicator tool from Ranger that you're probably used to seeing either in the uh, rectangle or the new mini round foams and I'm just using a little water here and I flicked it all over the watercolor design. You can see that ink starts to move, move a little bit as it starts to absorb into the paper. Now I did stamp a vase using the Avery L Bottle It Up stamp set and I just used the Simon Says Stamp Black Ink for that, and I applied the chips, pardon me, I applied the Tumbled Glass and Salty Ocean Distress Inks to my Ranger Craft Mat and spritzed them with the Mini Mister filled with water to make some watercolors. Because I want to fill my vase, 
I, I wanted my base to have some color first of all and I also wanted it to look like it was filled with water. So I'm just using a couple of colors of blue distress ink here and a paintbrush to apply that to get a nice coverage inside of my stamped line. Just going back in with a with the salty ocean here for a little bit darker color. And the green of the stems does start to run or bleed a little bit, which is fine. For this design, it actually looks really good. I, I'm not going for perfection with this. I just want the overall feel to look like a vase filled with these beautiful flowers. I did dry what I had done a little bit with a heat gun and then I went back over it a little bit. Now I did have a little bit of a oops <laughs> over there on the right side some of the distress ink bled outside of my black line a little bit and I tried to fix it and that didn't really work. So here um, in a little bit I'll show you what I ended up doing. I didn't want to scrap the whole design and I figured I could maybe figure out a way to kind of cover it up and so uh, I will show you what I ended up doing here in a little bit. Now I just put some heavy acrylic blocks on top of my design while it dried because I wanted it to stay relatively flat. Once it is all dry I'm ready to stamp my greeting and I'm using a greeting from the Avery L Needle Little Love stamp set. I stamped the bottom line with some black ink and then I'm going to stamp the cursive or script style word with the Simon Says Stamp Doll Pink ink. I thought this was a nice complement to some of the pink there in the flowers. And finally I'll finish with the rest of the greeting again with the Simon Says Stamp black ink. Just stamp that right above. I kind of worked backwards from bottom going up. I'm using the Sakura black gel pen to add a little detail to the center of a couple of these flowers, just adding small dots. Then I'm going to take the Wink of Stella clear glitter brush marker and go over some of those larger florals, the pink and the orangish red yellow flowers. Just going all over these designs really lightly with the glitter brush marker. I like to finish all of mine cards I think lately with just a touch of glitter using this marker. And you can really see some of the water detail now that the card is dried where the, the water that I kind of just flicked over the, the Distress ink whipped away the ink. I'm taking the white pen, opaque pen from Sakier now and adding a little dot detail to some of these purple flowers. I had thought that maybe when I tied some ribbon around the top of this vase and I ended up using string that the tails would kind of hide that little oopsie where the watercolor went outside of the vase line but because I decided to go with a thin uh, string it's not really going to work out like I thought and I went ahead and, and tied it around just use a small needle to poke holes on either side and I'm going to tie it into a little bow and then I will use a white pin to dab on some paint to cover up that little uh-oh here. This is a kind of blunt tip white marker, opaque, so I'm just, I needed to get it flowing here. I don't believe I've used it before. I'm just dabbing it over where I went outside the line. I don't want to get too heavy of an application because I really don't want it to be visible that I've had to correct something here. But this is just a great way if you're working on a white background to fix a mistake. I thought that
that the card base needed just a little something. I'm using some Simon Says Stamp Audrey Blue cardstock, which is probably my most favorite color of cardstock from the Simon Says Stamp line. I just absolutely love this. And I went ahead and taped the diagonal stripes, Simon Says Stamp 6x6 stencil, over my card, and I taped it in place with some post-it tape. And I'm using my daubers again. They were handy and out, and I'd already inked up one of them with the Peacock Feathers ink, and I didn't have to apply a whole lot more ink to it. So I'm just going around the edges, basically, and applying ink through the stencil. It doesn't have to be a real even application. In fact, I think it's even better if it's not. I like the kind of variation in light to dark and not perfect everywhere. You can kind of see it there. And I didn't need to do the middle part of the card because I'm going to be covering it up with my stamped and, and stenciled piece here. I applied a little foam adhesive to the back of my watercolor piece. And I'm going to just line that up with the top of my card. And I've cut an even amount off of the sides and the bottom of the card. And this is the finished result. I hope you've enjoyed this card featuring using distress inks with daubers and stencils. All of the supplies I used are linked below the video on YouTube. I appreciate you stopping by and we will catch you next time.